this is your time to pray, please pray. And if this is your time to just reflect, do that, do whatever helps you skyrocket. Today we're gonna to be focused on feeling our bodily sensations to keep ourselves in the present moment. First, we're just gonna connect with our breath and see where we feel it most naturally. Whether that's in your nostrils, your throat, or your stomach. Focus on the coolness in your nostrils as you inhale and the heat in your nostrils as you exhale. You may even feel the hairs in your nose moving around. Our nose could be our anchor for this exercise. As you exhale, can you feel the air on your upper lip? And how does your upper lip feel against your lower lip? There really are thousands of bodily sensations for us to feel and be in the moment with. We're gonna start body scanning, starting at the very tops of our head. Can you feel where your hair goes into your scalp? Running down your scalp to the back of your neck. Invite feelings of warmth, coolness, tingling, tension, pain, relaxation. Take two deep breaths into your neck and exhale any tension it may be feeling. Now, let us move up to our ears. And no need to count everything that you hear, but just acknowledge the different sounds in your area. No need to label them. We have so many opportunities to go out. And this is our opportunity to go in. Now let's bring our attention to our forehead and our temples. And relax. Let your eyes close if they haven't already or come to a soft gaze. Let your cheekbones just melt. Allow your jaw to drop. Right now we're focusing on gravity, working on our facial features. Let your shoulders follow. If you start to feel distracted, just smile through it because it's really not a big deal. 
And remember, you always have your nose as an anchor to feel the warmth and the coolness in your nostrils. Let's continue this body scan. And when I say body scan, I kind of think of it like there's a car in my body. I'm driving that car around and I'm kind of sightseeing and seeing how each part of my body feels. Let's start in our right foot. Focus on how your right toes feel. Can you even feel your right pinky toe? Examine that area fully. Can you feel a heartbeat anywhere there? Is it cool, warm? If you're cross-legged and your foot is touching your other leg, your right foot is touching your left leg, try to only focus on the feelings of your right foot. Now, let's start to move up the leg to our ankle. If you're wearing jeans, maybe you feel the jeans on your skin here. Running up your calf to your knee, which if it's bent, you, you may feel your pants tight around here as well. Just take a few minutes to really just explore the feelings of our lower body, our legs, our hips. allowing our body senses to keep us in the present moment. If you feel distracted, you can always bring it back to your nostrils. Now let's have our body scan move from our knee up our leg right into our hips. Go up from your hips to your lower back. We're gonna take two deep inhales. Now imagine it like filling up a big balloon. When you exhale, imagine all the air leaving your body. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Nice. Now let's move to our belly. We're going to do the same exercise here. Where we're going to really focus on filling that belly up like a balloon. Now, inhale. Inhale. <clears throat> Exhale. Now, I'm not sure if this is true or not, but I've heard emotional tension is stored in your belly. So if you'd like to believe that, we're going to take one more breath in here and as we exhale, focus on exhaling any emotional tension you may be feeling right now. Inhale. Exhale. 
sea. Now we're going to move up our solar plexus, up to our chest. And you're just going to breathe normally, not deep breaths. You're just going to get fully in tune with your chest. Maybe when you inhale, your shirt touches your skin in a different place. The subtle expansion and compression of your chest. The only bad meditation is the meditation not done. Now, if you'd like, you can put your left hand on your heart and your right hand on your stomach because we're going to find our heartbeat right now. Heartbeat in your chest. Sometimes an easy way to do this, if you don't do this often, is to hold your breath for a few extra seconds. Now focus on that heartbeat. And remain mindful of your breath. Focusing on just your heartbeat and your breath and your chest. Now let's see if we can feel our heartbeat anywhere else in our body right now. Maybe where your foot hits the ground, your temple, your throat. Focus on all the different places you feel your heartbeat. All right, y'all. I don't have my bell today, but <clears throat> let's start to wake up. What kind of bell would it have been? A ding, 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 ding. <laughs> yeah, normally I got that dong. <laughs> Yo, gong. <laughs> yeah, but the thing yeah. is, you know, I kind of like not having it in a way because it, it, it allows me to not finish the meditation. You know, it's like I'm like go living life after it and I'm still in that state almost. True. How are, yeah. how, how are my levels, by the way? Can you hear me? Yeah, you're good. I Beautiful. Hear you. All right, show. Well, if you just meditated with us, much, much love. Yo, this virtual sangha is dope. Today's guest, we got Nick Bodden over here. Yep, He's, yep. He plays fullback for the Detroit Lions. This man is from the Bay Area. He's a Bay mm -hmm. Cat, Cali boy. He played at San Diego State for football. He was, mm. jump, he was jumping around positions until he got that prize fullback. Now he's killing the game in the league, man. Nothing but respect. First off, man, thanks for coming on today. Appreciate you. Of course, bro. Thank you for that intro, and I appreciate you having me, dude. That was fun. Hell yeah. Um, you seem super comfortable meditating. Is that, do, you, do you meditate often? Yeah, I've, I've had a, an interesting relationship with it, really, um, kind of go in phases of being really um, methodical about it and being daily, and then days where I just don't think about it and don't don't put it on my schedule. Um, so it's really been not, not a, not a love-hate, but just, just like a full systems go or kind of not for me. Right. Um, but the and thing about it is whenever I put the time into it, it I always feel good after it. You know what I mean? And you, you always get that feeling that you're looking for. Like, I, I really liked what you said during. You said, what, what was it? It was like, any only bad meditation is no meditation? Yes. Yeah, the only bad meditation is the meditation not done. Yeah. I really like that because that, that is pretty real. Because sometimes, you know, man, like, we'll be meditating and, 
you know, there's certain days where I have this Instagram live thing and I'm meditating. Maybe I just drank a little too much coffee or something. And like mm -hmm. I, the meditation doesn't feel like I got to that place. But the thing is, is that that's why this is a practice. It's a lifelong practice. It doesn't matter how you did that day. Yeah, totally. When, it's the... Go ahead. I was going to ask um, who who introduced you to to these ideas? Um, you know, it was probably in high school or coming out of high school, um, when I was getting recruited and, you know, it's just a stressful time of wasn't getting a lot of looks. I was playing quarterback, um, here in Los Gatos at the time, wasn't getting a lot of looks, just talking to different people within the town about, you know, how to manage stress. And even at a young age, you know, high school, you don't think, you know, kids have stress, um, that you think meditating will help, you know, it's kind of just like, well, you're young, you'll figure it out, you'll get through it. But. I think it was a uh, one of our really good family friends. Um, his name's Chris Trapani. He's a really big real uh, real estate guy down here, and he he uh, incorporates it after after he does yoga. So he kind of gets into his own state through yoga, and then we'll do a 10, 15 minutes after that. And he's been really good about that for you know twenty, thirty years. Super successful guy. And then kind of as I started going through and trying to find out, um, you know, more ways to be mindful, more ways to be successful, you know, daily habits that really successful people do, you know, meditating kept popping up as one of them. So through, through my life, just kept trying to explore different ways to get there. Has he kind of remained um, somebody who's been in your life or a mentor or was that kind of just like a, a part of your life and you're just really grateful he was there for that? No, he's, he's one of my, his daughter's been my best friend um, growing up since I was in sixth grade. So oh, they've cool. been great family friends. You know, my draft party was at their house. They had 200, you know, friends, hooligans, friends, family, you know, all systems go at their house, um, which was pretty special for them wow. to do that for me. Um, so yeah, he's, he's a great family friend, great guy. Cool, man. Um, so I know that after you got drafted, um, you went through uh, an ACL tear, right? Yeah, that's correct. And <clears throat> I wanted to ask you about that because I know that, um, as fans, we see athletes getting hurt all the time and we're like, oh, that's just a part of, you know, the game. That's a part of being an athlete. But I, I also know that it's extremely, um, met, it, it can hurt you mentally as well. And I, I wanted to ask if, if meditation, if you did, were meditating at all during that time. Yeah. Um, I've been, I've been pretty on and off for probably about the last, you know, six years or so, um, where, where on has been times of like extreme stress which you know doesn't doesn't make a ton of sense um but to answer your question through that injury uh yeah there, there was a lot of times where i was you know being consistent with it and it was helping um for me but it's kind of just it's, it's kind of an interesting thing you know it's like um i like to relate a lot of it to religion um i don't know i don't know how religious you are we didn't really get, get a chance to talk about it before but i didn't grow up religious at all you know my parents kind of gave me a choice at a young age i'd rather go play catch on sundays than going and listen to somebody, you know, talk monotone and talk about something that I didn't fully understand. But as I kind of grew and in, in, into uh, faith, kind of on my own, just feeling God pulling me towards him. So just asking questions to people who are more knowledgeable about it. Uh, it's almost like you don't want to, you don't go to God only when stuff's totally wrong. You know, that's not, that's not how it is. That's kind of not what he wants you to do with your, your relationship with him. So I kind of try to relate that with more of meditation now that I've gotten older and have gone through different things in my life where stress has been extremely high, you know, during certain times. So right. I, I know it's a lot better for me daily than it is when, you know, you need it. Yeah. And that's, that's the thing that I, I, one thing I love about meditation is that you can be a part of any religion, believe in any God and still meditate, you know? Totally. Yeah. So, um, Wow. So, so you were starting to get spiritual in, um, in college, it sounds like then. Cause yeah. Was, yeah. Could, did you go to college all four years, by the way? Um, yeah, I did. Uh, I graduated early from high school because, so I graduated in December of our senior year. I kind of skipped out on the second semester, uh, just to try to get down there and start working and really just to not get in trouble. To, I, you know, everybody knows what second semester senior year is like. You kind of yeah. have an idea where you're going and, you know, oh, what the next yeah. is. Just, that was a good call. Were you a troublemaker as a kid? Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, got, I got way, way more stories than we have time for on here. Right oh now. man, oh my! Yeah, I, I had a lot of lessons that needed to be learned early on. Thankfully, and, and then going to uh, 
SDSU or uh, San Diego State. That I that that school is pretty wild as hell too, huh? Yeah, I had my my share um, of run-ins with with um, people in uniforms there as well. So <laughs> all different there. kinds of uniforms on the field, <laughs> off the field. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh man, great uh, lessons learned there too. So you know, this is, this might kind of see seem random, but <clears throat> I'm I'm so fascinated. Um, you know, I see all these correlations in my life uh, between professional athletes and um professional musicians um you know that's what we are you know yeah and, and you know i maybe one day i'll get signed to a record label maybe not um but one thing I've, I've i've been feeling about a lot of record labels lately is that they're not um protecting a lot of these young guys to a degree of of their health you know it's like they they uh, just want them to make the music, go tour, be crazy as hell. And if they get hurt because of that, then whatever. It's not a big deal for the record label. And for you, I know that your physical health is extremely important to the Detroit Lions. But do you do you feel like there's times uh, where they're part of your life, uh, like off outside of the field? Yeah, um, with our with our team specifically, um, you know, our coach uh, Matt Patricia at the helm, he. Uh, is huge on mental health. You know, he, he totally understands that it's not just physical wow. and he, he pushes that. So we have a guy on our staff who, uh, it's like a sports psychologist for us, you know, just a really easy guy to talk to. He's, you know, he's, he's worked with the warriors through their dynasties, worked with, you know, all kinds of sports teams. So he, uh, he comes in, he's with us, I think like five days a week he's there. And he, you know, if you have any sort of issue, anything you want to talk to him about, he's super easy guy to go talk to, uh, which is pretty special. Wow. But, um, because normally yeah. I think of like a head football coach who's just like a, a super hard ass, you know, who yeah, who's and, not and thinking is, about that. Totally. And he is, you know. Uh, he, <laughs> you're like, coach, coach, that, but... you're hard. <laughs> Trust me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And like, you know, at, at that at that level, everybody's tough. So there's a certain level of, you know, trying to make guys mentally tough and then trying to save people's bodies. So uh, he, do, he does right. a good job of um, balancing that and. I think it's something he thinks about, you know, everybody can get better at everything. So I'm sure, you know, going to his third year and my third year, you know, uh, there's different things I'm working on, different things he's working on, different things the team's working on. So it's really just trying to get better, you know, day, day by day, inch by inch. And so um, in terms of, of the team itself and not just the management and coaching, what, what do you, uh, Nick, what, what do you bring to the locker room? What's what? Do you, how do you feel that you improve uh, the team, dude? I'm I'm a guy who just wants to set an example, you know, um, both mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually. I want to I want to be a guy that people go, you know, there's something about that dude. Um, and deep down, you know, it's my faith. It's God giving me strength to do whatever it is I need to do. Um, and that's something that's took, like I said, took me a while to get there. You know, I had to go through a bunch of screwed up shit in order to find that, which is a blessing. But, um, you know, I'm a guy who's like there first, leave last, um, always asking for extra work, always trying to, you know, do, do more than the next guy. Cause I'm just the most competitive person on the planet. So right. I think that every single little habit you have, or every single little extra amount, you know, five minutes of stretching here, you know, five minutes of film study there, you know, extra meditation there, and like all of that adds up exponentially. You know, it's like you can do a couple things here and there, but if you do a tiny bit on everything extra, it adds up so much. And that's kind of like been my secret sauce from going from college to the league after being a quarterback, being, you know, good in high school to going to San Diego, not being that good at quarterback to switching to fullback to being god awful, wanted to quit, absolutely hated football, got my ass beat every single practice cursed it out you know the worst the worst year of my life my sophomore year in college to the following year as a junior being a, a first team all-american and then wow. having look from from the league and it's all just the little things add up which is like it's it's really simple wow it's it's, it's simple <laughs> but but then why how come everyone doesn't do it then you know it's i think it's about consistency um you know we're we're human we're we're made to make mistakes you know it's about overcoming those, but as as long as you can keep stacking up these little habits, is what I call it, then you'll get there. You know, it's it's just about cons consistency on a daily basis. Who, who, uh, not who, but what 
what drives you, man? Because you're playing, uh, you're playing, you're you're in a profession that's su- at such a high caliber, and um, you know, in college at at uh, San Diego, that's a high caliber as well. And changing positions, uh, like you said, going through these injuries, man, like you're just a fucking warrior. You what? Right. What's yeah? Like where is is that? Where in your heart is is that strength at? You know, um, it, again, it comes from my faith, uh, just from the jump. But really, when it, like about football and life, which are two pretty pretty big things for me right now, it's like I'm I'm when I play football to get respect. You know, like I, I like doing shit that other people don't want to do. I like doing shit that other people can't do. So I'm gonna go stick my nose in there and try to you know, be, be the guy out there, um, for a certain amount of respect, you know, and then that will carry over into other parts of my life. All these little habits, all these little, you know, things that I've started stacking up is gonna, I'm only building right now in my football career, but it's going to take me to somewhere way farther to where I can serve others and help other people at like such a higher capacity. Football is just a platform to get there for me right now. Um, Oh, right. definitely respect, and then just passion for the game, dude. I just I, and the grind, the preparation. I love watching film. I love lifting. I love fucking running. I love you know just the little things that people will hate on just because it's they'd rather go you know play video games or kick it you know with friends, family, which by any means aren't bad things. But if you really love what you do, you got to put everything into it. Right. Wow, that must uh, it must feel nice to know what you want to do. And that being said, what would be, uh, do you have like an ideal situation for when you exit the league? Is there something that you've been thinking about what you'd like to do? Or right now, since you're in this moment, you're focused on that. Um, no, I, uh, you know, it's an interesting balance, um, to try to find with putting everything you have into the investment of being in the league now because I could start putting my mind elsewhere and then, you know, lose focus on what's important right now for my career. Right. Um, so it's trying to find a balance between, you know, trying to learn different things without putting too many of my eggs in other baskets before I become the best player I can right now. Cause this career I have, this platform I have is going to be the best, you know, of my situation right now. So for me, it's that, and it's a constant battle in my, in my head, dude. And something that I, that I, you know, go externally for help from other people of like, how much can I put into trying to seek other, other types of information, other types of knowledge. So it's like, for me, it's, you know, reading, I have a few different books that I'm reading that just all I put throughout my house in different spots. So you know, I got a bike right behind me. I bike here in the morning. I got a book on top. So I'll just sit there for 10, 15 minutes, bike. And then I got a book by my bed that I'll, you know, read a little bit. So I'm not going like crazy into trying to, you know, solve world's problems or become a stock trader by day, you know, stuff like that, where I'm going to lose focus on my goal right now with football. And that's becoming the absolute best I can be and do that. Yeah. And, you know, there's, um, there's so many, so many different avenues to go down. And I think, when I when I think about uh, oftentimes in my life um, when I needed something or searched for something, I found that you know people who look for something are people who find something. So mm-hmm. it, it sounds like you know uh, you, you're doing it a great job, man. Like because like you said, you're focused on the task at hand, and you have thoughts about the future, and you're interested in that, and you're trying to get yourself educated and ready for that. It's all so it sounds like it's just all gonna work out for you. You know, you have a great head on your shoulders, man. Thank you, bro. Yeah, it's really just about trusting the process and you know, when you know, God doesn't put you up to anything that you're not ready for. You know, for example, I have a coach who's um who I've been training with for the last few years. I was I was telling you about him before. His name's Tark Azim. Um, just a really great mental, you know conscious mindful like everything that um you know you're what you're all about uh you should you should really check him out he uh he's the one who kind of got my my headspace and in, into there about um i don't i don't i just forgot where i was going with that maybe we could get him on an interview someday he he's a he's a trip of a dude for sure you should he, he dude he's actually doing uh every monday uh he's doing these things called the game plan uh it's like a 12 15 minute 
and it like basically interview um, of like what I do with him one on one. So I'll, I'll send you the link. It's a Zoom. You know, you hop in. You don't see any. He didn't see you. You don't see him. But it's it's cool information for sure. Dude, Side note. <laughs> I, I would abs- I would absolutely love that. Yeah, I'll, <laughs> I'll for sure send you the info. So, uh, getting back to in in the locker room playing for Detroit. Um, you know, you're out in, in Detroit. Now I don't know shit about Detroit. I know it gets hella cold. <laughs> I know it gets hella <laughs> <Yeah>. cold. <laughs> um, no when you're out, when you're out there, who, what's your base? What's your base? Do you have like a nice support group or do you have like, you know, a few homies on the team? You know, like who's that squad that kind of holds you down? Yeah, for sure, dude. There's, there's, a, you know, I was incredibly blessed. I'm, I'm sure every team's like that. Um, you know, not every team has a bunch of Antonio Browns you know, going and just head cases. So we, we have a ton of really good dudes. You know, I live with a guy named Deshaun Hand, who's my best friend out there. He's a big time homie. He played at Bama and we got drafted in together. And uh, so we've been living together for the past couple of years and he's a, he's a dog and, you know, he, he makes me want to be better. He pushes me. So he's really good, you know, anchor out there. And then there's a few other guys who, you know, who I've kind of drawn to who are older dudes like Danny Amendola, who just gets down to fucking business, bro. Like, he knows how to win. He knows how to work. That dude knows, like, so much. <laughs> he's an OG. Yeah, totally, dude. He's – and and this – he's the one who kind of got me thinking, like I, – I asked him. I'm like, you know, we were shooting pool one day. I'm like, dude, what are you trying to do after football? And he's like, what do you mean? I'm still on plan A. He's 14 years in the league, dude, still on plan A. I'm, so yeah. I'm like, dang, you know, I'm out here trying to, you know, learn all these different things. I focus on plan A, dude. It, it's like that. That's what, He was the first guy who I talked to who that's, that was his mindset. You know, he's going to have all kinds of opportunities he's done. So Yeah, totally. And, and that's the thing is you just kind of – you got to have trust in where the wind's bringing you. You really yeah. do, because otherwise you're going to, you know, try to contort to go somewhere else and you're just going to fall down like a shitty kite. Yeah, totally. You're just going to have too much on your plate. Exactly, man. Wow. So that's cool. You, I, I didn't know. Um, I guess I never think about NFL players living situations. That's so dope that you live with someone on your on your team. You guys probably are just like, let's go, you know? Yeah, dude, for sure. We yeah, we sit down. Even though he's a D lineman, you know, we'll sit down, watch film. I'll run shit by him, ask him, you know, what the mind of a D line be thinking. Um, he doesn't ever really ask me what an O lineman thinking because those O linemen are just they're just trying to move people. So right. we all know, know what they're thinking. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't know what it is, dude. They're just I'm trying to root this guy up out of here. Uh, <laughs> yeah, he he's definitely a guy who pushes me to be better for sure. That's cool. I actually kind of got a similar situation going on right now. So I'm living with my buddy down in Malibu and um he's starting his business. It's a recruiting business, so it's um, you know, getting um employees for employers, uh long term yeah. r- long term slots. So him and I, I work three hours for him a day. And then after that, he works for me for a few hours a day. And so, Sweet. yeah, man, yeah, it's great. Cool. You know, I, I, we put in a bunch of effort into the safe, smart recruiting. And then after that, he comes over and he's all Zane Roche media oriented. Dude, that's awesome, bro. Damn. Good for it's you been, guys. It's been dope, man. I've only been here for a few, uh, for about a month now for the lockdown. Yeah, dude, I can tell you've been on the sun. You got, you, you, got, you got a nice tan going yeah, on. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what's up with this lighting. I was just looking at it. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like bro, I swear. I swear Dude. I even, that right. You look like you've been Charlie Sheen out there in Malibu. Just kicking bro, it on the porch. I do not know what happened. Did I fall asleep in the sun today or something? Like, <laughs> I, maybe. No, you know what? Apple's fucking with me. This is a 2013. <laughs> oh, dude. Come on now. <laughs> I know, bro. My shit's lagging, bro. <laughs> Yo, hook me with some of that league money, dog. <laughs> Shit, dude. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, I'm on I'm on I'm on a porch right now, bro. <laughs> yeah, dude. You see these lights I put up in here? Yeah. Yeah. That's the best, man. Um, okay, let me check out. Okay. I wrote down this question and you know you've had a lot of really mindful answers. So I feel like this, this question kind of is in line and that's kind of uh, what is your Nick Bodden's definition of success? Mm. For me, for me, it's just serving, 
I think. I don't think it has anything to do with accolades. I don't think it has anything to do with, you know, plaques on the wall. I think it's just the ability to make people feel. You know, I, I don't want to be heard or, or, or seen. I want to be felt um, with what I do. So to me, you know, whether that's uh, business, sports, you know, people, you know, community, um, anything that involves helping, uh, I want to be able to serve others, you know, so I've been given this great platform uh, to do so. So I'm, you know, here and there with getting my feet wet, I'm trying to get more into that. But yeah, it doesn't have anything to do with something I can show you. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. Helping. It's more based around um, the feeling you gather as you're helping create community. Totally. Because really, like, it's all it's all about love. You know, it's all about, you know, love for people, love for yourself, love for God. It's like, if you can just spread that, um, then I think you're winning. I think you're successful. That's beautiful, man. You know, I think that I, I've seen um, a lot of different athletes who have um, you know, a real knack for um, helping be involved in community, create community. And, you know, let me run this idea by you. I, I have a feeling it might be because, you know, your whole life, you're a part of a team and it's about winning together and get better, better together. So when we have a badass um, fullback come into, you know, regular reality and they're like, let's go, like we can do make this difference together. You know, it's like, you know, mm -hmm. you have this extra force behind what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's been uh, like just this platform, you know, it's, it's like giving help, giving me more of a voice, you know, just from having a background in sports and, you know, ha just the kind of the, the, you know, route it took me to get here with, you know, getting in trouble and switching positions and all this stuff um, that were kind of, I almost lost there for a sec. There were bumps in the road, um, but it 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 is pretty cool, you know. People being like, "Dang, you look you look bigger on TV." I'm like, yeah, you know, I'm just a normal guy off the field, I guess. Damn, I man. Help, you know what I mean? Yeah, like you have some NFL starts under your belt now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's been a fucking crazy ride, dude. I absolutely love every day of it. Wow, man. Yo, I want to thank you again for coming on, man. Like it's it's just it's been a great time talking with you. I feel like, you know, we've met each other a few times in the past. We have a a mutual homie in Damon, who, by the way, man, that's a great guy right there, without a doubt, bro. One of the best. I love yes. Damon. Seriously, one of the best. He's got a he's got a great heart, and knowing that your homie's with him, I you know I know a lot about you. You know yeah. what I'm saying? No like, doubt. Likewise. Yeah, because he, he he's somebody who. Uh, the people that he keeps near he's real loyal and he's all about that you know that that real family his friends are his family oh for sure dude yeah and you, and you totally get that feeling too like even going to his house kick with his parents yeah yeah like yeah when you go like you, you can, can tell where parents. he came from dude because yeah dad's it's like it almost like we're cousins we're like cousins because we're both friends with him <laughs> yeah <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> that's hella funny like actually and it's actually so true yeah Oh Without man, a doubt. we got we got to all link up when all this craziness is done. Facts, man. Yeah, when I'm back in the bay, uh, I'll let you know, man. I, I would cool. love to kick it sometime. Is there anything that you'd like to uh, to say before um, you know we do a little signing off here? Um, yeah, dude. I, I just want to thank you for having me on, first of all. But to all the listeners out there, like you doing the guided meditation was fucking great, dude. Like I know that that's not an easy thing to do. I don't think I could do that. So that is really, really, really awesome that you like you took the time to learn that because that's a fucking hard thing. And you know, I've I've done some different ones on apps and whatnot, and you're solid bro. For real. Thank you very so much. So listeners out there, stay 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 doing it with him. Hell you yeah. You say you do it every morning at ten? Every single day on Instagram live, I start at ten AM Pacific time. We do a fifteen minute meditation and almost every day I have a, a guest for an interview. Sweet, dude. Yeah, this is awesome, bro. I, I've never been on a podcast where you meditate before. I love the idea. Thank you, man. Yeah, yeah. It's sure. it's uh, it's like hot ones, but for meditation, you know? <laughs> yeah, there we go. <laughs> you can have your own TV show after the YouTube. Yes, shit sir. Yep. Yeah. yeah, man. I got I got the whole plan, man. I'll, I'll run it Good. by you sometime. Yeah, no doubt, bro. Keep 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 uh, trusting in it, bro. For real. Thank you, man. Hey. Much love again, Nick. You have a yeah. good you have a good day. I hope your friends and family are all happy and healthy, my guy. No doubt, man. You too. I appreciate you having me. Peace. Peace.